Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to define associative binary operation, something you hopefully already know, but I want to talk a bit more about associativity and what it gives us. So you have a set S, a binary operation star, which takes two inputs and gives an output, and it's in infix notation. So the star of X and Y is denoted X star Y. Okay, now associativity says that for all A, B, C, and S, A star B star C is A star B star C. Now, this left thing is called the left associated expression because uh, the associating is happening on the left. The right thing is called the right associated expression. Though some people interchange the terms, uh, it doesn't really matter. And this has to be true. So, if this is true for a particular A, B, and C, then we say that A, B, and C associate. Okay? But associativity, the binary operation is said, said to be associative if this is true for all A, B, and C. Okay? Now, uh, what do I want to clarify here? That A, B, and C are allowed to be equal. So this is true, not just for all different A, B, C, it's actually true for all A, B, C, where A, B, C could, some of them could be equal, some could be different, or all equal, etc. Okay, now what does this really mean? Well, how do you interpret this? Well, you first do A star B. A and B are both elements of S, so A star B is also an element of S. Then you start that with C. Now, A star B and C are both elements of S, and so the product is an element of S. So, this is actually an element of S. The right side is also, you first do B star C. Inputs are both from S, so output is in S. Then you do A star with that. So, both inputs are in S, output is in S, and then that's an element of S. And then the equality is as elements of S. Okay. Good. So, now what I want to talk about here, oh, before I do that, uh, let me say something interesting, which is, suppose instead of this infix notation, suppose instead of using star in between, I use the conventional way we write functions. So, I wrote the binary operation as f. So, instead of x star y, I wrote that as f of x comma y. Then, how would I write associated with it? Hmm? Uh, it's just with the same letters, a, b, c. So, what would it be? Yeah, f. Uh, of a e. E. now f of that with c equals what f of a comma f hmm? e of c. okay good now does this look as nice as this no no Okay, good. That's that's the reason why when we are dealing with binary operations and we are trying to write things like associativity, it makes much more sense to use the infix notation. Infix just means you write the operator in between, right? Then it just feels like you're just moving the parentheses. Right? It feels like a completely intuitive operation. Now here, it's not totally clear what's going on, right? If I just give you this, this will look much more complicated than that. Okay? So, but you could write associated in infix notation, in the pre, in the prefix notation, which I showed you. But we typically use this. Okay, now I want to, to tell you a few facts about associativity. So, the first is that associativity of triples, that's what I've written here, right, actually implies associativity of arbitrary length things. It's called generalized associativity. What this says is that if I have any product of any number of things, then I don't have to specify the parentheses. So, for example, for example, I have a product of four things. I could parenthesize it in a number of ways, right? So, I have, uh, let's say, two ways of parenthesizing this uh, product of four things, but two of them anyways. So, consider this. This is the right associated expression, okay? But I could also do do something like, the left associated expression. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now what I'm claiming is that just from the fact that any three elements associate, I can actually deduce that any four elements associate. So I can actually deduce that these two are equal. Mm -hmm. Right? There's actually many more ways of writing this. You could also have parenthesis these two together and these two. But what I'm saying is all, all of them are actually give you the same thing. And you can deduce that just from the fact that three elements associate. So how would you do this? Let's say I start with this, 
Oh, uh, let's see how did I say. Yeah, I started with this. How do I get to this? From here to here. Oh, you just. Well, you associate A A two and A three. A two, A three, and A four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this becomes A one star. A two star A three star A four. Okay, mm -hmm. now. Then you associate A one, A two, and A three. No, you cannot do A1, A2, and A3 because A2 and A3. A2, A3, A1, A2, A3, and A4. Yeah, you do this, yeah. this, and this, yes. So that is A1 star, A2 star, A3, star, A4. And now you associate mm -hmm. A1, A2, and A3, and you get this, right? So in three steps, you got to. Mm -hmm. right? And what, what I'm claiming is in general that any two different ways of associating a product of any length, you can get from one to the other by repeated application of this. Mm -hmm. This associative law, choosing it cleverly. So now there's actually a way of getting from here to here in just two steps. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder to see, but there is a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, that's actually the next thing we're going to talk about. So let's look a little more closely at products of four things. I'll just for a variety, I'll call them W, X, Y, Z instead of A1, A2, A3, A4. So I'm going to first show you there's five ways of writing a product of four things. And then I'm going to, to show you the relation. So maybe we'll do them with the relations right here. So let's say we have W star X. So let's start with the left associated one. It doesn't matter where you start. Okay. Now, one way you could associate them is you treat this, this, and this. Your these three as your things. So what happens if you do like that? You'll get W star X star what? Y star Z. Yeah. So I associated this, this, and this. Now, what's the next thing I could do? I don't want to go back. So I I associated this. I do W x, y star z. Okay, so what will I get? w star hmm? x star y star z. There, there's no real arrows here. I mean, I could make arrows, but I will complicate matters. Okay, what, what, what more could I do with this? How could I reassociate this one? And do the in, inside, right? Mm -hmm. What more could I do? What could I do on this? W star x star y. Now, if I reassociate on the inside here, what will I get? Back here. So, what do I get? I get what's the shape? It's a pentagon, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's what they call the associativity pentagon. So when you have a product of four things, actually now now if I want to prove that this one is equal to this one, which is what we were trying to do earlier, right? I just call them A1, A2, A3, A4. We went along this path, but we could have gone along this path. Okay. It could have been shorter, but it's it's trickier to, to think of this. It's easier to think of this. Anyway, but the point now is there's actually given any two words, there's actually two paths, right? Given this and this, you could go like that or you could go like that, right? So there's a sort of a bit of redundancy into how the associative law is, right? There's sort of more than one way of that. Okay, this will come up a little later again. But the main point is generalized associative. The associative pentagon is sort of a bonus. Okay, now the next thing I want to say is powers are well defined. What do I mean by that? Well, think about x cubed. What would I need if you just had a set with a binary operation? First of all, could you define x squared for any x? How would you define x squared? Hmm? X. Star x, right? So that actually makes sense, right? Regardless of whether it's associated. Right? Squares make sense. What about cubes? x cubed. Now you have two, two choices, right? You could either do the left associated cube or the right associated cube. 
But now if it's associative, then we know that both of these give the same answer. Right? So it makes sense to unambiguously define cubes, third powers. Now can you unambiguously define fourth powers, fifth powers, and higher powers if it's associative? Yeah. Yes. Because uh yeah, you just like x to the n is just x star x star x star n times for any positive integer n. For n in the natural sense. Right? If you are actually over a group and you had invertibility, then you could also do negative things. But right now we are not dealing with inverses, we are just dealing with positive powers. Okay? And this satisfies a bunch of conditions. So it satisfies actually all the conditions you would like to see in in powers. So it actually satisfies uh, this right here. X to the M star X to the N is what? And x to the m to the n is x to the m times n. Yes. So it, it's it's like exactly the way you expect it to be. And also notice that the powers of x commute with each other. Even though the, the operation is not necessarily commutative, the powers of x do commute with each other. Right? Mm -hmm. Because x to the m star x to the n is the same as x to the n star x to the n. That's important, right? So, so even in our in our big structure, which is not commutative, we found these small sub things which are commutative, right? Just because of associativity. So, associativity gives you commutativity between powers of the same thing. That's interesting, right? Okay. Now, so we did powers defined, right? Let's try it here. The so SRA pentagon was for products of length 4. Let's write it here. So. Okay. Now, the last thing I I'll be talking about is interaction with inverses. Okay. So, associativity interacts nicely with inverses when they exist, which they always do in groups. Okay? So the first interesting thing is that with associativity, you can deduce that if an element has a left and a right inverse, they are equal in a monad. So there's a identity element. So monad just means binary operation, associative, and has an identity element. Then every element, if it has a left inverse and a right inverse, they are equal. Remember the proof of that? What do you do? You take your element, multiply on the left by the left inverse and on the right by the right inverse, and then you take that triple product and associate that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, just say A has left inverse B. There's a separate video on this. This is just a reminder. Right inverse C, you consider B star A star C associated both ways. Simplify and you'll get B equals C. Okay? And this equality of left and right inverses also gives uniqueness of two-sided inverses. If an element has a two-sided inverse, then it cannot have any other two-sided inverse. There's at most one two-sided inverse, right? And that just follows from the previous one. Okay. And then the last thing is, if an element is invertible, then it's cancellative. Actually, it's a little finer than this. If an element has a left inverse, you can cancel it on the left. If it has a right inverse, you can cancel it on the right. How do you prove that? We just did this, right? How do you prove that? An element has a left inverse, it can be cancelled on the left. You multiply the whole expression on the left. Let me write that down. So, if A has a left inverse B, so suppose I have A star C equals A star D, and A has left inverse B, then I just multiply both sides by B on the left. Then associate and simplify and I'll get C equals C. So associativity plays well with inverses. Okay? Interacts well with identity and inverses. What's a group? It's something which has associativity, identity, and inverses. Right? So since associativity interacts so well with identity and inverses, you get really strong 
strong restrictions on what groups can be. Right? They are, they are pretty strongly restricted. Okay. 